Hello and welcome back to the Dividend Experiment, the channel that helps you build a portfolio that pays your bills. The content that will be discussed is intended for information and educational purposes only and should not be considered investment advice or investment recommendation. The phrases earn passive income with dividends or invest in dividends and get rich are commonly used by various financial gurus. Although these statements are not entirely false, they might not provide a complete picture and could potentially lead you astray. Different investment strategies yield different results. For instance, understanding that investing in dividends is a long-term commitment and does demand a substantial investment to reach your desired dividend income is crucial. That being said, there is definitely a faster way to go about it that you're probably missing out on. In this video, we'll explore the ways to quickly reap the benefits of dividends without having to make significant initial investments. The Limitations of Dividend Growth Investing Dividend growth investing, while a sound strategy, presents notable challenges that investors must carefully navigate. One primary requirement is a substantial amount of patience, as this approach hinges on holding onto investments for an extended period to fully capitalise on the compounding effect of increasing dividends. Consider you're a dividend growth investor with £5,000 looking to invest in Unilever, ULVR, a UK consumer goods company. Currently, its steady dividend yield is 3.93%, with a stock price of 38.16, your £5,000 would get you 131 shares. With a dividend payout of 37 pence per share, your quarterly earnings would only be £48. This amount is quite low and might not significantly contribute to a stable passive income. Even if you decide to double your investment to £10,000, your quarterly earnings would only reach £97. When converted to a monthly figure, that's about £32 for a £10,000 investment. Unfortunately, this alone wouldn't get you to your financial goal. But since you're a dividend growth investor, you focus on the growth of that stock. If we look at the dividend per share over 20 years ago, way back in 1998, Unilever offered a 7 pence per dividend share, which means that over the 20 years, its dividend yield grew approximately 500%. The growth, however, tends to be gradual, necessitating a long-term perspective. One challenge is that building a portfolio of these kinds of stocks requires a good amount of money, but most importantly, time. Here's another strategy that will boost your passive income goal. What is income investing? The income investing strategy focuses on getting a steady and dependable income, though it requires a high current yield, a measure of how much you're earning from your investments. People usually see this income as money they can use for everyday expenses, or in other words, a portfolio that pays your bills. The common perception of this strategy is that it's often seen as a good fit for older individuals with a shorter time before they need to use their money. So let's talk about British American Tobacco PLC, or BATS, BATS, a stock known for its high dividend yield, standing at an impressive 9.16%. And as of the time making the video, its stock is priced at about £25 per share. If you decided to invest £5,000 in the stock, you'd acquire a total of 198 shares. British American Tobacco currently distributes a dividend of 57.7 pence per share on a quarterly basis. Considering your ownership of 198 shares, this translates to a quarterly dividend payment of £114.24, equivalent to £28.56 per month. While this figure may appear modest at first, over time the impact of compounding becomes evident. For instance, if you were to double your investment to £10,000 in shares, your quarterly dividend income would increase to £228.48, resulting in a monthly dividend of £76. Notably, this strategy proves to be more advantageous and cost-effective compared to other dividend strategies in the market. On top of this, the power of reinvesting dividends becomes apparent as it contributes to your gradual growth of your overall investment. So why is income investing faster? Seeking Alpha author WYO Investments conducted a comprehensive income projection analysis comparing high-yielding, slow-growth stocks with faster-growing companies as part of an effort to refine their dividend growth strategy. The goal was to assess which approach is more advantageous for generating income over time. The findings from this analysis led them to recreate the model using stock buckets derived from typical examples. There were three buckets, high-yield, dividend growth, and a core dividend investing bucket. And here are the stocks in each. Actually, the stocks don't matter as the projections are just based mathematically on the figures, but it's still interesting to see the components. So in the high yield bucket, there was Enterprise Product Partners, AT&T, Omega Healthcare Providers, Abvi and Altria, with an average yield of 7.1%, an average estimated 30-year growth of 2%, and an average 5-year dividend growth of 7.5%. In the high dividend growth bucket, there was Lowe's, Visa, Microsoft, A.O. Smith and American Tower with an average yield of 1.3%, an average estimated 30-year growth of 
and an average five-year dividend growth of 17.3%. And in the core DGI bucket, it would typically be composed of high-quality dividend growth investing stocks like Johnson & Johnson, Pepsi, McDonald's, Aflac and 3M, with an average yield of 3% and an average 30-year growth of 7%. So the average yield and estimated dividend growth was calculated and plotted on a graph. Some key notes on the buckets. The high yield bucket assumes a 2% dividend growth, considerably lower than the 5 year averages of these companies. The high growth portfolio assumes a 15% dividend growth, lower than the combined 5 year growth of these stocks. And the core bucket assumes a 3% and 7% dividend growth, considering the long term horizon. And the assumptions in the model are that dividend growth aligns with earnings growth, the stock market is perfectly efficient and the portfolio's of value increases by the growth each year. The dividend yield remains constant. All dividends are reinvested. The portfolio stays fully invested in companies that meet the bucket requirements with no dividend cuts and consistent year-over-year -year growth. And these core assumptions form the base case with additional variations tested for sensitivity, evaluating impacts on both portfolio value and income produced. And this is how it turned out. The interesting thing for me here is the crossover points between the three strategies. High dividend growth only starts paying higher dividends than the classic dividend growth stocks at about year 17. However, the strategy that clearly provides the most income is the high dividend yield. The high dividend growth doesn't pay actual higher amounts until about 27 years later. This means that your stocks that you choose for high dividend growth have to continue growing at such an extremely high dividend growth rate for 27 years. In order to live off dividends faster, the clear answer is to invest in higher yielding dividend stocks. And that being said, it's no panacea. The pros and cons of income investing. Investing in higher yielding dividend stocks can offer both advantages and disadvantages. It's important to carefully consider these factors before making investment decisions. The pros are income generation, so high yielding stocks are attractive to income seeking investors, and the regular dividend payments provide a consistent cash flow, making them particularly appealing for those who rely on their investments for living expenses. Dividend growth potential. Some companies have a track record of consistently increasing their dividend payments too. And this can be a sign of a healthy and growing business, and investors may benefit from both the income stream and potential capital appreciation as the company's value increases. Historical stability. Companies that pay high dividends are often more established and financially stable. These companies have a history of generating profits and returning value to shareholders, providing a level of confidence to investors, especially during economic downturns. Inflation hedge. Dividend payments can act as a hedge against inflation. Companies that consistently increase their dividends may help investors maintain their purchasing power over time, as the income stream grows along with inflation. But there are cons, of course, too, which is that they have limited growth potential. So while high-yielding dividend stocks offer a steady income stream, they may not experience the same level of capital appreciation as growth stocks. Investors focusing solely on dividends may miss out on the potential gains from rising stock price. There's also the risk of dividend cuts. Companies facing financial challenges may cut or eliminate dividends completely to conserve cash. High dividend yields can sometimes signal that a market expects a dividend cut, and investing in such stocks carries the risk of reduction in income. Interest rate sensitivity. High yielding stocks can be sensitive to changes in the interest rate, as we've seen in the previous year. When interest rates rise, fixed income investments become more attractive relative to dividend stocks, potentially leading to a decrease in the demand for high yielding equities and a decline in stock prices. Industry and sector risks. Some industries and sectors are more economically sensitive than others. Concentrating investments in high yielding stocks within a certain industry or sector exposes investors to the associated risks such as regulatory changes, economic downturns or technological disruptions and market volatility. Even traditionally stable dividend paying companies can experience stock price volatility. Economic uncertainties, geopolitical events, or company specific issues can all lead to fluctuations in stock prices, impacting the overall value of the investment. So what do I make of all this? We went through some concepts which may go against the general consensus, so it may have left you thinking about changing strategies or simply wondering what to make of it all. To clarify my own thoughts on this dividend growth versus high income debate, my own personal portfolio style is explained in great detail in this video called the metronome. And this is one of the key concepts for this channel. To summarize, there are three key parts of the stock portfolio. Part one, you choose a level of income you need to live the minimum viable lifestyle. And this is the worst or lowest living standard that you would willingly entertain actually living. This is necessarily going to be lower than the actual amount you would like to retire on. You calculate how much that lifestyle would cost you per year and you work out how much that would require as a dividend portfolio size. 
This is the first part, the dividend portion, and obviously makes sense that this would be high yield dividend stocks for the reasons discussed in this video. Part 2. After you hit that target, you invest in index fund or market ETFs. And these should be completely no brain set and forget and stacking up at market returns over time. Part 3. The high risk approach. This is about 3% of your portfolio in extreme high risk tail end type assets that will give you a disproportionate level of return if you're proved to be correct about them. Part 1 gives you a base, a safety net income, and that income will continue ticking back into your overall portfolio. The bulk of the portfolio in Part 2 will give you market returns, counteracting the potential slow growth from Part 1. Part 3 is the outlet for taking the excessive risks and could pay off in a big way for you without destroying your whole portfolio. But anyway, that's just a general overview. It's definitely worth watching the whole thing if that sounded like an interesting concept. In a nutshell, whether you go for income, growth or a mix of both, it really comes down to what fits your money goals, how much risk you're comfortable with and your time frame. If you're after building a portfolio that pays your bills soon, high yield income investing might be your thing. But if you're playing the long game for big gains, growth investments could be more your style. The key here is finding the right balance that suits you. So figure out what you want, how much risk you're okay with, and how soon you want results. Remember, money plans aren't set in stone, so be flexible, stay in the know, and tweak your plans as much as needed to match where you're headed financially. If you liked this video, and if you made it this far, I'm guessing you probably did, then I have some good news for you. I'm giving away my PDF guide to the 10 dividend investing commandments, or the criteria that I use to pick dividend paying stocks and I'm giving it away to you for free. All you need to do is submit your email in the link below and it'll get delivered to your inbox straight away. Again, that's for free. But that's not the only benefit of joining the email. You also get updates on the almost daily dividend portfolio, interesting stock ideas or news, and special deals and free stuff that I can share with you. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. See you.